It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, September 20th, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content. It's got the bag skate in the rear view mirror and the first preseason game coming up. Yeah, it's preseason. I can't get too excited. Ross. You're Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, we finally got to hear from John Tortorella, and we are going to dig into that. But Russ, uh, let's get a quick little report from the USHL tournament uh, because we have uh, some Flyers prospects there. Yeah, uh, Heike Ruohonen and Austin Moline. Um, Ruohonen is interesting because he played second line center in the first game. He played first line center in the second game. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of little details in his game that are good. His face-offs were kind of like 50-50, but, you know, when you get elevated like that, that's the next jump uh, to take. His offense isn't really shining yet, so I don't know what to make of that. It's early in the season, so I'm not going to, you know, worry about it. But I, overall, you know, he looks good, and uh, for the start of the season, actually pretty dialed in. As far as Moley, he plays a real simple game. Like, I like when defensemen can play a simple game like he does. Uh, he started off on the third pair, then he moved up in game to the first pair for a little while he looked good doing everything he got an assist in one of the games and yeah i just i like his passing i thought his um his stick was in a good spot he's always presenting his stick in the offensive zone so a lot of a lot of things to like there you know i know he's a late rounder so we'll we'll keep an eye on him yeah well he's got time to develop he's ushl this year college the following year so um he he has a good opportunity and a good path yeah, for sure. So John Tortorella finally uh, spoke to the media after the bag skate sessions uh, yesterday. And I think, obviously, the first question out of everybody's mouth in all of these interviews, I think, for like all the players, too, is how's Matt Vamichkov doing? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Um, so Tort said that he did watch him in the rookie game. Um, you know, and that his role is to kind of teach him to be better away from the puck, that it's clear that he has the right offensive instincts and um, has the skills there, but that, you know, he has noticed so far that he's very receptive to learning and being taught. And, you know, the way Torts talks about guys off ice is so charming. And it just continues. He's like, he's such a great kid. He loves hockey. You can see how much he wants to be there. And like, that is my favorite part of torts. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a percentage of him. That's good. um, And human. And that's good to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, what torts doesn't want to tell you is yeah. He vacates the defensive zone a little too quick and I'm going to, you know, tell him when it's okay to do that and not okay to do that. Right. Yeah, I think that's really the key here. But just to kind of emphasize that he seems teachable. And I think that's all that Torts wants at this point, you know, Yes. in as far as improving the aspects of the game um, that fit towards his system here, right? Right. And, and he, you know, he will. But they'll, like anybody else, there's going to be a learning curve. There was a learning curve with veteran Flyers players when they took over. So he's going to have one, too. Yeah, I think, you know, the other thing is he got a little like uh, wax poetic, I guess is the right phrase about last season. And I think having the summer to kind of marinate on what went wrong and what went right last season, um, 
you know, he sort of knew that he wore everybody down and especially wore Samerson out at the end of last season. But then he also didn't coach them in a way to support Urson, knowing that he was overplaying him. And I, I like it when coaches like can admit what they did wrong. Yeah, sure. I mean, at least he he was reflective. That's that is the sign of a good coach and and saw that. And, you know, the the only thing that worries me is he's like, yeah, well, you know, they want to build on last season and he's still acting like, well, yeah, we're going to we're going to make the playoffs. And it's like it, it's acting like that. Yeah, I still think in the back of his mind, he thinks they're a playoff team. He's not going to come out and say it, but I think he thinks that, especially since they got so close last year. And to me, it's like, sure, I mean, you always shoot for it, but they don't really have the lineup for it, I don't think. Yeah, I thought it was interesting because he was asked, you know, obviously we all noticed that they shifted to more of a transition game last year yeah. and were a lot better on the fly, which was a huge improvement over the previous year. Right. Yes. That was the, the big difference. And that, um, but sometimes it came at the detriment to other things like, you know, working hard in the corners, the finishing was a huge issue. And so Torres really, I think understands to a large degree that a, the roster hasn't changed very much because they have no money he said right. that <laughs> right like literally directly he said that and so they're gonna have to figure out how to balance that transition game that they built successfully last year with those other skills and finishing on shots right well okay so that's see that's where i'm getting at with the talent level of the team you know, right. talent level is pretty good but if all of a sudden you're a team that plays at pace but when you're playing at pace, other things are falling to the wayside. There's only so much you could do about that. Right. Because that's, you know, that's just talent. Right. You have the skill or you don't. And I think right. like he, they're really going to be looking for some guys who can do net front work and get deflections. That was something that he said very specifically. You know, my thought is, well, you kind of need a JVR or a Wayne Simmons to do that. And they don't necessarily have. No, but they have, right now. they have A-balls and he does that. Yeah. And that's what yeah. he does. And hopefully he'll notice him. If he doesn't notice him, then they may not have anybody to do that again this year. I mean, you can't put Farabee in front of the neck because he's just going to get hurt. Like he, he has that ability kind of like reminds me of Mike Richards with that. But. You know, he's just going to get banged up. Richards managed to stay pretty healthy for a while, for a long yeah. stretch. Um, he did make a joke about PDO and analytics, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> just because, um, you know, he's he's not that guy. But at least he recognizes that the analytics exist. I feel bad for the That's analytics people. That's my win. <laughs> I do. I feel bad for the analytics people because they probably give him all the sheets and he looks at 5% of it. But that's what it is. Yeah, I you know... Step one to uh, solving a problem is acknowledging it exists. So we know right. that Torrance knows that the analytics. Oh, he exist. knows it's yeah. You know, he knows it's there. Yeah. Um, I thought his summary of kind of his tenure with the Flyers was pretty good too. You know, year one they wanted to subtract and get like the right culture started. Right. Year two yeah. was was about developing the players and switching to their transition game. Year three now is get better across the board. And I think, you know, that's a tall order. It given... really is. Like, that's a big leap. Like, when you're a developing franchise and that's sort of the tact you're supposed to take, that's a big leap for year three. Like, that, I don't know. He's setting this. That's what I'm saying. He's setting those sites really high. Even though he may not utter words, the words playoffs, when he says something like that, that's what he's thinking. Yeah, I, I think uh, it was really echoed by the players, though, because they all said that it's really in the back of their minds that, you know, they're not going to sneak up on people anymore and surprise people because they were successful last right. year. It, you know, their transition game is what it is, and now people know it. So that's why they have to develop these other skills and other tactics, because people know who they are because they're the same team as they were last year. Right. I mean... But, you know, they have some veterans there that don't have a ton of years left in the league and they don't want to, like, say they're on a rebuilding team. So, of course, they're going to say that they want to, you know, 
say that they're going to push it forward and do that. And they might, but yeah. if they don't, it's really not a negative. It just depends how it all goes about. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. I mean, if they are playing well, but the, all the other teams are better, it's fine. You're still supposed yeah. to be a developing team anyhow, but yeah. if it's frowned upon or if it's like, Hey, you know, I got to whip, I got to whip them harder because they're just not doing it. It may not be the right way to handle it. So that's, that's going to be the tricky part of this season. Yeah. I think that's the key point that you're making though, is that if they don't progress from a points perspective, that's okay. As long right. as they're progressing from a skills and a system and let's mm -hmm. get the power play together, like all right. of those other things. It doesn't matter what the points are at the end of the season almost. Yeah, the number one goal should be not have the 32nd ranked power play in the league. That should be the yeah. number one goal. Yeah. But if they Absolutely. only move to 31, then they should still um, make changes. All right, we are going to talk more about what some of the players had to say and then preview our first preseason game against the Washington Capitals. We'll get to that coming up next. Some of the best concerts of the year take place in the fall, and it's my favorite time to head to a show. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. My favorite part of the Game Time app is that it's great for getting notified about last-minute super deals so you know you're getting the best bang for your buck. And best of all, they have all-in pricing, so there's no surprise fees at checkout when you activate that feature. And your tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. On the Monday show, we will be recapping the Flyers versus Washington Capitals preseason game and uh, get you all the latest in training camp updates. Plus, it's Monday, so we will have our nemesis of the week as well. Um, I do want to highlight, you know, we heard from a couple of the guys who were injured at the end of last season. Actually, all three <laughs> that yeah. had surgery off season, And I think that's really like, you know, a, a key thing to learn you know, how these guys are feeling. And so Sean Couturier said that he feels better physically and mentally. The back skate took a lot out of him. Towards notice, the kids did not do so well in the back skate, but it's he kind of expected it. So Well, he's that. not that old. See, this is a worry of mine. Everybody was like, Jet Luchenko did that back skate like it was nothing. And then you have the other side where Sean Couturier had trouble. And like I said, it's not like Katori is an old man, but the mileage is starting to pile up from all the injuries. That's the worry for me. Yeah, he did have that muscle core surgery at the end of last season, but that he said is successful and he was able to train like he wanted to. Right. Um, and uh, Jamie Drysdale also had um, a core surgery, but it was this different core surgery than Sean Katori. So his recovery was actually a little quicker. Okay. Um, he said he was feeling much better. Um, and that, you know, at the end of last season, you know, it just wasn't comfortable for him out on the ice because he, because of the injury, he stayed in Philly the whole off season and did the right. full recovery with the flyers trainers. And he said that that was absolutely like the right way to handle this. And he feels much, much better. Yeah, did he say he got a bed yet? Like if he stayed in Philly the whole time, <laughs> I'm hoping he got that bed because I know he. Didn't yeah, have I don't know where he's living these days. Don't want to uh, pry too much there, but um, yeah. So I think you know, and then of course there was Ristolainen who had two surgeries. One it's the first season, we've heard from him in forever. Yeah, yeah, and he said that he felt 100, um, and especially over the past couple of weeks, uh, he hasn't noticed any lagging aspect to the injury. So yeah. that's good. And I guess it's just, we'll see, right? Yeah. It, we'll see once, you know, things get battle tested, you know, where he stands, because there's going to be some rust on him for sure. Yeah. And uh, I, I think, you know, th that's a, a key thing that I, I want to see in this first preseason game. Right. So looking at, you know, who do we want to see in this first preseason game? 
and why. And and to me, I want to see Coots, Drysdale, and Risto in this first season game, you know, first preseason game because of the injuries. I want to see what they look like. Yeah, I think I think it's important, and I do think they should play in that game. So yeah, I'm with you. As far as the other guys, uh, I think we want to see Mitch Kopp, but we may not see him in this first game. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to predict. If we see him, though, my question, I guess, is do you want to see him with like Luchenko and the prospects that he's been playing with so far because they've built some chemistry? Or do you want to immediately try and start him out with flyers like Frost and Tippett? No, I would still put him with the prospects. I would play him in the game because he'll be fired up because Ovechkin will probably play in that game because it's a home game for them. Uh, unless he's still banged up. I know he's sort right. of in, in the middle of that. But if, if Ovechkin doesn't play, then I might not play him. You know, But I would do him the favor of playing him if, if Ovechkin was in there just to kind of get him fired up playing against them. Yeah, I think that is. But he is friends. The, the other thing is, though, he is friends with Mira Shashenko, So you could put it right. for that, and that might be some fun. Yeah, so I'm expecting sort of like one and a half NHL lines there right. and the rest prospects or AHL got guys there. And so if Mitch Kopp plays, I want that one line to be a line that could potentially play with him. And if not, it could be anybody. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on what their ramp up plan is. Um, I would put Ivan Fedotov Me in too. that though. He needs games. You you, you just play Urson at home. Put Fedotov yeah. and everything else. He he needs to get reps. Yeah, I think that is the right way to go. And I think, you know, there's um, some questions about the Washington Capitals right now. And so I don't know if that would affect who they would put in from a Flyers perspective, because if they're looking to see particular matchups as a clue. Not for a this, first preseason but- game. I don't think it's going to matter. I think, you know, from a Capitals perspective, they're certainly going to miss TJ Oshie's leadership. And he was like a linebacker yeah. out there. Like he would just put the smack down on players. But um, so, they, you know, they're but they they have refortified themselves. And, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think this will be a good tester just because it's a road one. You know, again, they're never going to play full speed in a preseason game. No. So. Yeah, I think, you know, like I said, we'll see mostly prospects or AHL guys. Yes. Like, I bet we're going to see those those two-way contract borderline guys. We'll oh, see yeah. Abels. Yeah, they you should know, we'll be front Eklund. and center. Yeah. They, yeah, because they really have to get evaluated and see where they fit relative to the rest of the roster. Put Abels in front of the net. Let him start doing that. See what you got. I mean, he's asking for that kind of player. That's the kind of player who could do it. Yeah. Exactly. And um, talking more about the caps, um, obviously, you know, Oshi with the back issues, yeah. it, it's going to be out. Ovi was injured um, in a skate earlier this week, but I I don't know that he'll play in this game just he because of that. He may not. He may just eat more spicy food like he was talking about and <laughs> <laughs> that they served him. <laughs> Yeah. Um, aside from the return of the Screaming Eagle jersey this year, which I love. Was it, um, that was what he had in his rookie season. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Um, you know, we saw a bunch of guys last season that did really well on Hershey, um, you know, as we covered the Phantoms pretty extensively last year and we'll do again this year. Um, some of them got some time up in the NHL and are looking to create a bigger role from themselves and get a permanent spot on their roster. You mentioned Marash Nishenko. I think yeah. he is definitely one of those. Oh, guys, he's one right? of the top ones. Yeah. Connor McMichael's another one. He he's starting to emerge. So that's he's another guy that would be a big deal. And I would also yeah. say Sandine needs to kind of, you know, show that he's healthy and he could be their top power play guy. So that's that's a big thing, too. Yeah. Henrik Lapierre uh, is an interesting case to me he because he is such a, a tweener. And like when he's been up with the Caps, he's done well. But there still like wasn't necessarily room for him last year when everybody was healthy. And so is he going to? like overcome that this year and get that permanent spot as you know, and not just be a, if there's injuries kind of guy. Yeah. He's got some size and talent. It's just that I think they don't know what to position to put him on. That's the problem. I think this year he'll have a, 
a, at least a better chance. Not a guarantee he's going to make it, though. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's the guy on the caps that I think is the most question mark to me of the guys that are fighting for a spot there. But um, yeah, I hope we get to see Marashnishenko. I think he's yeah. he's a fun player to watch. And to your point, if he and Mitch Koff are both in there, I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'd be some fun going on. I, I would look for that. All right. Well, uh, it has been quite a week with a lot of Matt Bay Mitch Koff all the, all day, every day, which is the right thing to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, he is a very strong. But not to player. do it all year. I really hope the media well, doesn't just focus on Mitch Koff every press conference because Torts is going to get tired of that. And I'm frankly, I'm going to get tired of it because he is a rookie and there's plenty of other players to, to talk about. Yeah, we're going to get into that and other big thoughts of the week coming up next. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get three weeks free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season game Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time. Uh, Jets did win. I say pick the Browns this week. Keep the winning going. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. So, uh, Russ, you were just mentioning the uh, situation where we don't want to get too much Mitch Koff and just ask about him every single press conference and stuff. Right. I think, you know, that's you know, my biggest thought of the week is that he seems to be doing okay so far. Sure. Um, he seems to be integrating really well. All the guys have been talking about that. Everybody is saying his English is getting better and better and he's a fun guy to be around and he's just happy to be on the ice. And Torts said really good things to say about him. And I think, okay, now we've got this sort of initial flood of information in camp. Let's just try and let him go to work. That, yeah. that is my key takeaway here. Yeah, you don't want fans to get Mitch Cuff fatigue. You don't. He'll When he does well, talk about him. But it's going to be a long season. So, yeah, don't make him the focus every day because it's just not worth it. Yeah, and I think that's why it was really good that he played in a rookie game because it was kind of, okay, we got it over with. Right. Like outside of the context of the big club. Right. And then he can just go to work and they can figure out where he fits best and and do all of that kind of behind the scenes work. And hopefully, yeah, we can, you know, now we have to just wait until his first regular season game. Right. And, and that'll be a big deal. And then you hope it fades a little bit. But, you know, if he's scoring every game, sure, you could talk about him every game. But if he's not doing anything, don't talk about him. Yeah, I think that is the right approach to take. Um I think the other big takeaway is that, you know, we talked about this earlier a little bit, but all the guys mentioned Scott Lawton, especially um, he also talked about the gritty t-shirt, which I want to get into, but okay. uh, um, you know, all the guys are like, yeah, we just can't be complacent this year. We saw our, our team take a big step forward last year and we cannot like just rest on our laurels on that. And even, and I think they all know, like, maybe we won't get better in points, like I said, but we have to take steps forward in terms of building skill and building other aspects of the arsenal. And it seems to like everybody seems to be on the same page, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. I mean, you never know who's going to like have bad injuries and what might happen. And, you know, you can't control that for the teams ahead of you, but you can control is, yeah, how your team plays, how you go about your business. And I think they're all going to do the right thing with that. Yeah. And I think, you know, the other big takeaway for me this week, and that goes back into, you know, rookie camp as well, heading into training camp is Jet Luchenko. I think, you know, he has gone up, I think, in a lot of people's estimation. And a lot of people thought he was potentially a reach pick, right? Well, a lot of people were misinformed because they never saw Jet Luchenko play. So, of course, they knew some of the other names and they're like, oh, well, you know, the Flyers are making a reach here. But they don't know. They didn't know who Jet Luchenko was when they were commenting on him. So I think they're only surprised about his play because this is the first time they're really seeing him play. 
to be honest. Yeah, but I think he has gone up in people's estimation, which is good. Whether or not that was, you know, deserved or not in terms of they should have been there in the first place. Right, I think they should have been that's there in the first place. Question. Like, I, I, well, that's I, fair. You know, even at the draft, it was like, yeah, I understand, you know, the narrative about these other players, but that doesn't mean he's lesser. And, and that, you know, so again, I, I don't even know how that narrative sort of started, but I'm glad it's gone. Yeah. And I think like it's hard when there are a couple of other guys that seem like more obvious picks and e we have like, you know, We've talked obviously about it. Sure. we talked about it and said there are other players we might've picked instead given who was available at the time, but that doesn't take away from Jet Luchenko and his no. skill. No, definitely doesn't. And, you know, he's made strides and he'll continue to make strides. Yeah. So I think that was really good for, for me, at least, yeah. just to see kind of the eyes open about Luchenko and his skill and, you know, what he could bring to the table and what a Luchenko Mitchkov combination could bring to the table. Yeah. I mean, it's down the line, but I also feel like that's a big deal. I'll tell you the one thing for me was, um, when I had gotten that exclusive on the show for, you know, Ivan Fedotov, you know, I got to know him better because I was curious in my mind how he sort of dealt with last season because it was a whirlwind and it didn't necessarily go his way, even though he did get into the NHL. But then, you know, we had one good game, one horrible game, right? Uh, one good relief appearance, I should say. So, yeah. you know, I mean, he took that in stride. Like, I think he shook that off. And he's had a good offseason. He's been in Philly. You know, he's he's an older, mature guy. He's got a wife. You know, he's shopping at the Russian stores now. He's getting his his food that he's comfortable with. That These all are things that help the off-the-ice stuff. And then I think if the off-the-ice stuff is going well and it's not chaotic, it's easier to focus on the ice. Yeah, absolutely. And just like the for the sort of off-ice side of all of this, the key takeaway – Scott Lawton continues to be the king of being up for anything yeah. off the ice. And I like, th this is why I don't want him traded. And he talked a little bit about, you know, the, but you know, it's going that. to happen. You know, it is. So well, I understand why you're saying listen, that. We're, but like, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking Fine. about how great Scott Lawton is and how much we love him on the team yeah. just because he is up for anything. And I think that, you know, you need somebody like that who, even you if do. some of the other guys aren't, he can shoulder that and he can be a public facing guy. He can talk to the media about things. He can be a community relations guy. Um, I'm excited to see if he and Wayne Simmons collaborate on something this season. That'd be good. And, but he talked about, you know, making the, the JC Penny photo shoot with Britty and then turning it into a t-shirt, you know, it's benefiting the Pennsylvania SPCA, um, which is a cause he cares about. Um, and they got a cat from there. Um, he's now a cat guy, which I love. Um, he said, yeah, I mean, I, you, you know, know, I used to say this all the time that I'm a dog guy who owns cats, but I, I'm a cat guy too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I just didn't like to admit it for some reason. Listen, justice for cat people, because like cats are great pets. They and, are. Um, so I'm glad he appreciates that. And I did want to say something Penny. else about the JC Penny photo shoot thing. Yeah. Um, what's funny is I don't know why they got a bad name for it because like as a kid, I went to professional photo places too, and some of them sucked. And and yeah. just now and nowadays parents want to do it. And just because you have a camera doesn't mean you know how to take pictures. So good for JC Penny. They took some good stuff. They got some good press out of it. Yeah. Well, apparently they uh, he wanted to do a calendar, but Gritty has the market cornered on calendars. So that's why they did the T-shirt. And but not the Advent calendar. They do not have one. <laughs> well, well. Maybe they'll do one this year. Maybe. Um, but that Lawton bought the t-shirts for the whole team. And yeah, so yeah. I, I'm sure they'll show up wearing them, like everybody oh, yeah. wearing them when they uh, come in. So that'll be fun. I did notice in, uh, in um, Upper Deck MVP's cards that they have mascot cards. So mm. look out for that. I'm sure Gritty's got a few cards in there. Yeah, I bet he does. All right. That will do it for today's show. We will be back on Monday. We're going to recap the game against the Washington Capitals and talk about the latest and greatest from camp. 
As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. You can send in mailbag questions on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You can email us at Locked On Flyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russell I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Have a great weekend, everyone.